Speedsters, as the name suggests, have the power to move at super speeds. And typically they can run really fast, in quite a lot of cases faster than the speed of sound, and in some cases faster than the speed of light. And they're not only able to move fast, but they're also able to bend the laws of physics, such as running on water. And their bodies usually have the power to heal super fast as well, as their body's natural metabolic rate has been enhanced and sped up thanks to their super speed. But fast healing wouldn't be the only extra ability that a speedster has. Their super speed powers would have a knock-on effect on their bodies and give them extra powers as well. And this video is going to go over these additional powers that all speedsters should have. Fire Punches When something moves fast enough, it ignites the hydrogen, oxygen and other gases in the air and creates fire. Meaning, if a speedster punched or kicked someone fast enough, they'd literally be able to have a fire fist or create balls of fire that they could launch at people. Or if they just picked a person up and carried them at super speeds, then they'd burst into fire. In fact, speedsters should constantly have an aura of fire around them as they run, much like the Rapidash Pokemon does. This is actually the reason meteorites and other objects burn up when they enter Earth's atmosphere. They're moving so fast they create extreme heat. And it's why in the Justice League live-action movie, the Flash's suit is partly made from the same materials used in spacecrafts, to protect him from the extreme heats of running at super speed. Super Intelligence Since speedsters can move at super speeds, this means that signals from their brain to the other parts of their body have to move super fast as well. Otherwise, they just wouldn't be able to move and react to super speeds. So because of this, their brains work much faster than a normal human being's does. Basically, they have faster processing speeds than normal humans, which means they're all super intelligent. Now the Flash has worked this out and uses the speed force every now and then so he can think at ultra-fast speeds. But in truth, any speedster would be able to do this. And they'd also be able to read super fast. So much so that they could read an entire library in a matter of minutes. And thanks to their brains moving super fast, they'd be able to process this information. So basically, it would be the same as a normal person reading an entire library, it'd just be quicker. So they should be able to retain the information. Which is amazing. Imagine being able to read a whole university degree's worth of knowledge in just five minutes. In a week's time, you'd know more than any human being who has ever lived. So there'd be no such thing as a dumb speedster, as their brains just can't move slowly. Super Strength Being able to break the sound barrier without breaking a sweat is not easy. In fact, to run at this speed would require a superhuman level of strength. Now, some speedsters do actually bend time in order to run fast. But a lot of them, such as Quicksilver, can just run fast. The same as Dash can in The Incredibles. And in order to be able to move at this speed, you would need superhuman strength. There's just no other way that they'd be able to move this quick without super strength. And this wouldn't just be in the legs. After all, they can move all of their limbs at super speed. And you need to move your arms super fast in order to run super fast. So basically, all of their muscles would be super strong. And every speedster would have to have as much strength as someone like Superman. Otherwise, they just couldn't move as fast as they do. So they'd be pretty unstoppable as well as pretty fast. Aftershock. When a person or object moves at super speeds, there is an aftershock of force that follows them. The easiest way to explain it is to think of fanning your hand in front of your face. It moves the air and you can feel the force of that air on your face. We all do it every now and then just to cool ourselves down. But if you were to do this at super speed, fanning your hand back and forth, you would be able to create an enormous amount of force. So much so that you could easily knock over a building and to a smaller extent, you could use it to knock a person backwards. So if a speedster was able to move their arms super fast, it would be the same as a Jedi using a force push. Or the same as an airbender from Avatar using an air blast, because moving their hand that fast would just move the air that fast, which gives them an extra power. Tornado making. Now, using this aftershock ability, a speedster would also be able to create a tornado, simply by running in circles really fast. Or if they were to run on water really fast in circles, they could create a water vortex. And of course, they could also run in the opposite direction to stop a tornado or vortex. Now, I know this is kind of the same power as Aftershock, but I had to list tornado making as separate because it just sounds like such an awesome ability. Durability slash invulnerable. As I said, moving at super speeds is not easy. 
and it is very taxing on a human body. There's a reason cars and planes have to be made out of such durable materials, because otherwise they would break apart from the sheer force of moving as fast as they do. And the same is true of speedsters. If their bodies were not invulnerable, or at the very least, insanely durable, then if they run at the speed of sound, their skin would literally be torn off their bodies, along with their muscles, and their bones would break and shatter, and their ligaments would tear. In fact, a speedster's legs would literally fall off their bodies if they attempted to run so fast and they weren't invulnerable. And if they ran faster than the speed of light, which several speedsters can, then their bodies would just be vaporized. At least they would if they weren't reinforced. So speedsters can't have the same endurance level as the rest of us, because humans just can't endure these kinds of speeds. We would literally die. So speedsters would have to be invulnerable, or more durable than a normal human, unless of course their body generated some sort of protective field, like the speed force seems to for the Flash. But then that field should also make them all invulnerable anyway, otherwise it wouldn't be able to protect their bodies from the force of them running. Now obviously in stories the characters need to be able to be injured for the sake of drama, after all what is a story without stakes? So that's why in media they don't have invulnerability. But in real life, if you had super speed, then you would be invulnerable, and it would be almost impossible to kill a speedster with kinetic force. Flight Thanks to super strength, a speedster is able to leap into the air at incredible heights. They'd literally be able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. But it actually goes further than that. You see, in order to fly, a person needs to create an upward force that is stronger than gravity. That's all. A good example of this is Angel using his wings to flap up and down and keep himself in the air. And speedsters would be able to do the same. Since they can kick down with extreme force, they can continuously just keep blasting themselves high up into the air. Much like All Might does in My Hero Academia, when he uses his super strength to propel himself through the air. And although this may not be the smoothest type of flight, a speedster would still be able to keep himself in the air pretty much indefinitely or at the very least, long enough to simulate flight. So all speedsters should actually be able to fly. Sonic Booms When you break the sound barrier, there is a sonic boom. Now, generally that doesn't matter, as the only real objects that move faster than the speed of sound are planes, and the booms don't really do that much when they're in the air, because there's not much around them. But if you were to use a sonic boom in the right location, it could cause a lot of damage. And since a speedster can punch faster than the speed of sound, they could set off a sonic boom with their punches, which would be pretty devastating to the enemy. Now, sonic booms are a form of sound energy, so they have to be pretty powerful to hurt someone. But if a sonic boom went off in your ear, which you could do if you were to punch someone at the speed of sound in the ear, then you would definitely feel it, and there's a good chance that you would go deaf. So it could be pretty useful to hurt someone who has super hearing. I mean, this could even hurt Superman, as he has been shown to be hurt by sonic attacks before. And since he's invulnerable, attacking his ears is a good place to start. And of course, if a person just continued making sonic booms by repeatedly breaking the sound barrier, then they could essentially create a sonic boom bomb. After all, if you built enough of them up one after another, then you could potentially knock over a building. And at the very least, a speedster can create sonic booms powerful enough to shatter every window in a skyscraper. And although that might not be that useful for your average day-to-day -day activities, it's still a very powerful ability. Building up energy Now, sonic booms aren't the only energy that a speedster could create. When you rub your hands together, it creates heat, usually just enough to warm your hands up a little bit, that's why we do it. But if you were to do this at super speed, then you could build up thermal energy, potentially enough to melt steel. Or if you applied the heat to sand, then you could literally turn that sand into glass, just with a little bit of friction. And the same could be done with friction to generate static electricity. So much so that you could make a bolt of lightning, much like the lightning that the Flash flings at his enemies. And if you were to focus this energy in one spot, you could potentially create a small bomb of energy. And if you were to vibrate objects fast enough, then you could destabilize them and cause them to explode as well, creating another little bomb. Basically, if you focus enough kinetic energy in one spot, then the resulting release of that energy will be fairly violent and destructive. And if you've got super speed, it would be very easy for you to build up energy in one spot. Creating diamonds. You could also use energy to turn coal into diamonds. 
You see, diamonds are created by putting carbon under extreme pressure over hundreds and thousands of years. But a speedster could subject it to that much force in just a matter of minutes. Even without super strength, this would still be possible. After all, if they were to hit coal with a hammer a few million times a second, then the kinetic force would build up pretty quickly and it would be able to turn that coal into a diamond. Now, this is a bit of an odd power to end on, I know, but I think being able to create diamonds could quite possibly be the most useful on this list, at least when it comes to paying the rent. And those are the extra superpowers that all speedsters should have, other than just being able to run fast. Of course, there are also a lot of other extra abilities that super speed would give a person. These are just the main ones that I've listed. But if there are any other abilities you think a speedster would have that should have been mentioned, then please let us know in the comments, along with what you think of the powers that I have listed. And I'd just like to remind everyone that we have some merchandise available on our store, and to quickly thank all of you who have donated to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.